name is Bob, and I love my two-car garage. Well, I'm down here at one of my new favorite places to come. It's called the Industrial Metal Supply. And uh, all kinds of cool stuff in here. I'm doing this video out here because I'm not sure how friendly they are in there toward cameras, but these are really pretty nice guys. But um, if you don't have one of these places near you, that's kind of too bad because uh, they're really fun. So one of the really cool things about this place is they're gonna cut these pieces of metal for me on that big machine that you see back there. So when they cut that quarter inch plate, you can feel the ground shake. Well, I found everything I needed and these guys were really helpful. This place is a treasure. All right, we are back in my garage, home from the industrial metal supply. And uh, I got this right here, a perforated piece of metal that I'm gonna use down inside here for my grate. I was gonna use some expanded metal, but I didn't wanna buy a whole piece. So I found this in their scrap pile. This guy is gonna go down in there, and that is where I'm gonna stack up my wood. I also found this, this is a great little find, little disc I think it was called a candle disc or something like that just a little piece of sheet metal because I need to replace this then I also found this is great it's a six inch disc that's gonna go over my stove top like that it's a perfect fit I think I'm gonna notch it out a little bit so that there's a space for one of those uh, picker uppers now I gotta drill a little hole in the middle of this disc because eventually I gotta stick this through the middle of it. So I made a little punch with a scratch all right in the middle. And I'm gonna drill a smaller hole first just because um, I'm afraid it might grab when I start to drill it. And I'm also gonna put a little drop of oil in there to kinda carry the heat away. Normally, when you're using a, any kind of machine, you don't wear gloves, but I'm going to hold on to this with my hand, and the edges are a little bit sharp, so I think the gloves are going to help me out in this situation. Now, I don't want to paint the actual cast iron stove itself, but some of these parts that I had to replace are made out of... Uh, sheet metal or sheet steel so i'm going to paint those because um they're just not going to rust up the same way i can't season them the same way that i can the cast iron spray paint is uh some call, times called radiator paint so it says it's high heat 2000 degrees so i don't think this thing is going to get hotter than 2000 degrees all right, well, I got all the pieces made. It's all ready to go back together and, and season it. But before I do, I want to give it one more whack with the wire brush. All right, well, looky here. It's all back together. Now, I'm not real happy with the way this bottom edge turned out. Uh, this piece is just... Um, pretty much destroyed by years of sitting in the dirt so it's all rusted out but it is good and solid and it's back together and it's workable I've got a plan to fix that later but for now we're gonna have to wrap this project up last thing I'm gonna do is season it now you can actually paint these stoves if you want to and probably initially it would look better if you painted it but I don't think that's really the way it ought to be done I'm going to season it just like you would season a cast iron um, frying pan with some uh, canola oil. And I'm just going to wipe it on there and then after it heats up, it, uh, it should just become, you know, really a part of the, of the cast iron. I'm using a, uh, one of these green Scotch-Brite pads and just wiping it on there. Again, just like you would season a cast iron frying pan.
Man, you know, I just bet you some steel wool would do a really good job, too. Wipe off a little more of that rust while I'm wiping on the oil. <laughs> well, there you have it. All oiled up and ready to go. Gonna take it up tomorrow and put some wood in it and uh, fire it up. All right, well, I came back down here to the church to set this thing up. I know the lighting's a little intense, but uh, I figure that uh, there's some people down there here that need to stay warm. Also, uh, if anything goes wrong, I won't burn my house down. <laughs> here we go. Found this cool pipe. It's got a nice shape to it. It's gonna fit the top of the back of the stove. So I realize there's a little bit of jerry rigging going on here, but um, it really is safe. I don't want to burn the church down either. Now the proper way to build a fire inside that wood stove is to build yourself a little log cabin. I'm doing it out here so you can see how it's done. So I got some pieces here that are gonna fit inside the stove and I'm making myself a nice little structure out of wood. A piece of mahogany right there. Expensive piece of wood. Cherry. Mm. Spare no expense. These little guys right here are nice to have. These are fire starters. You can get these at the grocery store or any place where they sell firewood. And I'm gonna put one of these in there because that's gonna help the thing get started. And then on top of my little log cabin here, I'm going to place the big stuff. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing inside my stove. Okay, well this is just such an exciting moment that I brought my daughter down here <laughs> so that we can fire this up. And I guess if you were a purist, you'd use a match, but I'm gonna use a little starter thingy. See so yeah, how those little starter thingies work. My little tumbleweeds. I'm gonna open up this bottom thing here too, because I want the air to get in there. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, well, that was fun. It's all fired up, keeping us warm. Yeah, it looks like those little plastic windows are burning out, so I don't know who put those in there. It might have just been uh, for looks, and they never really intended to use them. Our smokestack fell over, which is not a good thing, but <laughs> are you feeling pretty good about this, Charlotte? I think it's pretty cool. I'll use it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> the wood burning stuff. Well, that was a really cool project. That uh, little stove's going to keep a lot of people warm for a long time. Hey, I want to end this, uh, this series with a word to some of my perhaps underemployed viewers. There is a scripture in the Bible that says in all labor there is profit. So work is good, whether you're getting paid for it or not. Do something, do anything, build a table, learn a skill. Whenever I'm not busy, I make YouTube videos. Shoot, I've made 13 cents already. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching.